Anasazi, an ancient Mandean civilization in the southwestern part of the United States. The Mandean are mentioned in the Mexican traditions of 1325. These Mandi may represent the founders of Anasazi civilization of four corners in the four corners section of the United States. Anasazi is a Navajo word which means ancient ones for the founders of the spectacular cliff dwellings and great multi-storied pueblos erected on open plains near the San Juan, Salt, and Little Colorado rivers. Although American anthropologists accept the theory that the Mary Indians entered North America across the Bering Strait about 20,000 to 15,000 years ago, the Hopis, on the contrary, say their ancestors crossed the sea during their emergence to the present fourth world, arriving somewhere along the coast of Mexico or Central America, then gradually worked their way northward to settle in present-day Four Corners. They call the original cliff dwellers the ancient ones. These Anasazi were probably Mandean speakers. The ruins of their great stone cities are couched low on the mesa tops or nestled in caves along the sheer canyon walls of high desert region. These stone cities are exact replicas of the stone cities or cliff dwellings found in West Africa, especially in the area that was formerly part of the Malay Empire. In this area of West Africa, the Dogon people have made their towns. In what is now known as Four Corners, we find many of these great monuments. Four Corners is a region where the states of Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona come together at a common point. The Anasazi till the earth and even irrigate their crops and store some of the harvest for later use. At uh, one of the sites we find in Anasazi, there's an inscription. This inscription from Palatki is written in Manding language. It was found near the cliff dwellings. This inscription from Palenque tells us much. And it's very interesting that when you look at the Palenque cliff dwellings, they're almost similar to the Telum cliff dwellings of the Dogon people. The Malians left many inscriptions in the southwestern part of the United States. The presence of Manding in Four Corners is supported by the appearance of Dogon and Bambara ideograms called petroglyphs on rocks in the Anasazi area. Moreover, there are several tablets found in Four Corners which have been deciphered that were written in an aspect of Malinke. The Palatki inscription is also written in Manding, not Sanskrit as some people believe. Below we see the Palatki inscription. The Palatki is a Malinke inscription. Malinke inscriptions were read from right to left, top to bottom. There are five Malinke or Mandy signs on the Palatki inscription. The inscription says, Be suese, say yo. The English translation is as follows. Exist here a superior place of habitation. Make this place a success, consecrate, consecrate it to the divinity. The Mandine mentioned in the Mexican traditions are very important. We know in a sense that they are important because these Mandingo have left us so many interesting in sites, especially the Four Corner sites. There were many African communities found by the Spanish in the southern part of the United States. Quatrophages speaks of black men who penetrated to the American Southwest while other Africans migrated into Southern California. And as late as 1775, Father Francisco Garces discovered a race of black men, clearly African, residing in a community beside the Zuni Indians in New Mexico. According to, according to Quatrophages, the two races spoke different languages. In 1528, the Spanish explorer Cabeza de Vaca and Estevanico de Moor, or black man from Azamor, discovered numerous people living in the American Southwest as they sought to discover the seven cities of Cibola. The seven cities of Cibola were supposed to be centers where fantastic amounts of gold could be found. In what is now known as the Four Corner Regions, 
we know in a sense that this was a place where these manding left. So many great instructions. We know in a sense that, that the people who lived in this area were not just uh, people who were called American Indians. Because Sarum noted, noted that, and Sarum was an anthropologist, in reality, the inhabitants of the Pueblos, as we now know, were members of extraordinary varied tribes. They spoke widely different languages and had different historical back backgrounds. Devaca said that one of these ethnic groups was named Mandinka. Yes, Mandinka. The name is almost identical to the word Mandinka, which is a name for one of the Malinke or Mandi-speaking tribes. These Mandinke, Dinka people, they left many, many signs that relate to signs that are used in Africa. One of the most important Mandi signs that we find in Anasazi is the Kangaba sign and, habit and habitation signs. It's very interesting to note that the Kangaba sign looks almost identical to the Gwidjas sign that is uh, found in uh, Anasazi. In the Ana Anasazi era, we find many depictions of Malinke habitation signs and the Kangaba sign in the American Southwest. This sign is frequently found in West African areas settled by the Mandi speaking people. The Kangaba sign is clearly depicted among the glyphs found at Gwidjas Range of Southern Arizona. Here we see a picture of our Southwest uh, petroglyphs. Among these petroglyphs, you can see the Kangaba sign and other signs that are associa associated with the uh, Mandingo people and reflect the habitation of this area, probably by the uh, people of Mali. The ruins of Anasazi stone cities are couched low on the mesa tops or nestled in caves along the sheer canyons, walls of high desert region. These stone cities are the exact replica of stone cities that are built by the uh, Dogon people. It is very interesting that when we look at these Dogon cities and we look at the cities in the southwest, we find in a sense that these people were analogous. We find that these African people had already come to the American Southwest and they built these fantastic, fantastic cliff dwellings. Due to the spread of nomadic American Indians from the Northwest, the Anasazi was forced from their stone cities and cliff dwellings by the invaders. These Africans had intermarried with many uh, American Indian people, and that's why we see a clear Negro strain among the Southwestern American Indian population. In addition, many African communities were found in the Southwest when Europeans arrived in this part of the United States. One of the uh, most interesting signs that we know is, is that the Mandy. What we do know is that the Malians left us many inscriptions and left us, in a sense, the um, cliff dwellings in Four Corners, Mexico. In summary, the archaeological and historical evidence from Africa and the Americas coupled with the decipherment of ancient scripts used in the New World, illustrate that people from ancient Mali, probably led by Mansa Abu Bakari, colonized many parts of the Americas during the first quarter of the 14th century AD. These Mandi-speaking people, like the Olmecs before them, had a tremendous influence on American civilization, especially in the development of trade in Mexico. In conclusion, in 1310, thousands of Malians arrived in the Americas. Many of these Malians settled throughout South America and the American Southwest, where they left numerous inscriptions written in the Linky Bambara language that was spoken by the Malian court. The Palatki inscription is written in the Mandi language. This inscription describes a picturesque setting where the Palatki inscription and cave dwellings were found. Due to the spread of nomadic American Indians from the Northwest, the Anasazi were forced from their stone cities and cliff dwellings by the invaders. There was probably some intermarriage between Africans and American Indians, and today we see a Negroid strain among the Southwestern American Indian population. In addition, many African communities were found in the Southwest when Europeans arrived in this part of the world.